Well, hello everyone, welcome back to Mog's Workshop. Yes, we're going to be building an extremely tiny flight simulator, so we're going to need screens and computers and joysticks and buttons. But not these buttons, they're far too big. Look, these ones, these are really the right size for our job. Tiny ones, let's grab this one and start with him. Give him a squeeze. But ultimately, we're probably going to end up using all of them. Let's hook it up to an Adafruit trinket here. First things first, though, let's create a test bed and make sure we have some kind of circuit continuity. Otherwise, it'll all be pointless. Let's put the probes onto these little nibbly knobbly beds here, press in one of the butons, and we shall see. Hurrah, it works. Excellent. So, what does this test bed consist of? Well, there's all kinds of combinations of buttons and lights, so we can test things in our programming and see what's possible. And we're going to be using DCS World, one of their free planes. Not that I'm cheap, you understand? Let's start somewhere simple, shall we? We'll wire these up to the computer, and with a little bit of thinking and thonking, we can connect these and make the computer think that it's a little keyboard. So as we press these little buttons here, oh, we can make any letter we like appear on the screen, which means we can control anything we like just by changing the key bindings inside DCS World. Here we go, let's try the flaps. Well, that one worked nicely. Let's see what we can do here. Press this button, ooh, G for gear. The gear is coming down. Let's get a corresponding signal coming the other way to let us know that it's locked. Oh yes, there we go, the light has come on, we're all safe. Pressing it again, and what ho, yes, the gear goes up. What a surprise. By the way, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and click the little bell if you would like more crazy videos like this. Moving on, let's get on to, well, let's get on some plastic parts. Now, this is from an old kit of a big old cockpit. We're not going to use it as intended, of course. We're going to take all of these lovely things, and we're going to do some truly terrible stuff to it. Oh, yes, we're going to drill holes, and all kinds of bits and bobs are going to get chopped off. But first of all, let's take the chair, the little ejector seat, and let's start by by trimming up the little parts here with a scalpel. We'll come in with a finer blade, making them all nice and smooth, ready so that when we paint them, there won't be awful little bobbly bits sticking out. Here's all of the components, stuff for the seat belts there, all kinds of little accoutrement that'll get stuck onto the side of this thing and make it look really quite snazzy. Before we glue it together though, we'll just go in with a nylon brush and just make sure that all the little dust and shavings have been removed, otherwise they stick to it. And that doesn't look very nice. And the glue we're going to use is this Stamia Extra Thin Cement. It's extra thin and you can't see it when it's put on there. Completely blobby free. Here's all of the chair going together in rather fun style. Look at that. I think it needs a bit of a paint job though. But first, how is it even going to fit into our cockpit? Well, we've got the chair and we've got the cockpit. Well, we've got a bit of a cockpit and there's a couple of guide rails there. The screen's going to go just there. Now, we're going to put the seat here and we need it to be removable. Otherwise, it'll block our view. That's no fun. And it kind of is, but it's, well, it's all kinds of terribly wibbly wobbly. That's not going to work for us. Too flimsy. We need a scientific solution. Magnets! Yes, here we go! Magnets to the rescue. These little tiny magnets are super, super strong. Let's get a few... oh, let's get a few out. Uh, here they are. And we're going to fix these in so our chair's a little bit more solid. We have taken the chair and modified it slightly with a couple of cutouts in the bottom there and a big splodge of super glue on either side. Ooh, plastic and metal. They really like super glue. Plastic tweezers, of course. Metal tweezers would be all kinds of upsetting to use with magnets. And we just drop this in place and we fettle it in a little bit with a cocktail stick. Again, don't want to use anything metal here, otherwise it'll just stick to that and you'll never get it done. Ah, oh, but there they are. The glue has dried. Doesn't take long. Five ten minutes and we'll stick this into the cockpit and we'll do a little bit of magic on the reverse. Here we are, we'll hold it in place and we'll flip ski upside down ski and we'll take the opposing magnet and we'll find out where it is and drop it into place. Look at that, I didn't actually anticipate it being that far off. Let's try the next one. Three, two, one and bongo. There it is again, quite a long way away from where I thought it would be. Now we mark where the magnets landed with a little bit of pen and slap on some super glue. Again, super strong in this application. Yeah, so what's next? Well, we're going to tape these bits down and give them a light spray of primer. Doesn't look massively different from the bit we haven't painted, but trust me, it's there and it will make sure that when we do give our little chair 
there, there, a paint job. The paint actually sticks to it and doesn't at all bubble off and is all horrible mess. Anyway, here we go. It's snapped into place with the magnets. Will it work? One, two, three, up she goes. Hurrah, joy, it works. Let's get going with some paint and fast motion. We're going to put on some shade and we're going to make all of these bits pop out. Look at that, look at all the metal work. And now we take some dry paint. This one is Necron compound for all you Xenos out there. We smash it into the bristles of the brush, getting it all the way in as much as we can on a little piece of tissue paper, and then we just lightly brush it across. And this gives a nice metallic effect. Look at that buckle, rather shiny. Here we've blocked in some colours on the chair, just some basic greens and blacks upon what we already had, which is our sort of muddy metal grey. It is all looking a bit drab, isn't it? Let's get colourful. Look at this. We've blocked in some bright colours here. Let's make this chair really jazzy. Oh dear, what we've got to do here is something very fiddly. We've got to paint in these little black check marks on these ejection handles. And the way to do this is, well, basically very, very carefully. First of all, you put in these little marks. These don't have to be neat at all, because what you're going to do now is just use these as a guide. You can go on one side or the other side just to neaten it up. You can make sure that these lines are exactly the same thickness if you just go gradually and work your way around. Now, if you do happen to get a piece of black paint on a nice pristine piece of yellow paint, don't worry, don't be upset. You can always get rid of it with a cocktail stick if you're super fast. And if you're not super fast or you just let it dry, you can go over it with yellow. But be careful, a lot of yellow paints are quite thin. You might need several coats. Here we go, what have we done now? We've put transfers on, just some random ones I happen to have knocking about, and we've also splodged and splidged a lovely lot of oil paints. I'll show how we do that later on on another part of the model. Now we've got something very interesting. We've got seat belts, and they're printed on fabric on this sort of self-adhesive paper here. A bit odd, never done it before. Let's give it a go. We're cutting them all out. Look at this. This was tiresome, I can tell you. You can use a scalpel. I personally prefer a pair of scissors, a bit more control for this kind of thing really are terribly tiny and when something's tiny it is fiddly this is so fiddly me trying to get this little cocktail stick here to separate the paper and making an absolute cobblers of it but in the end with the help of fast o vision we managed to get to the point where i can get the tiny little buckle and try and get it on but my big fat fingers are too clumsy so using a lurid pair of tweezers we managed to eventually get it in place and peel the rest of the paper off and what do we do with it once we've got that well fantastic this is super fun All we need to do now is take it off and slap it on the chair because it's self-adhesive. Easy peasy. Look at that. That looks rather jolly once we got through it all. And here it is. Look, how many seat belts do we need? Well, we need all of the seat belts apparently because we don't want to fall off our chair. This one was a little bit more interesting, a bit more complex, a bit of weaving involved there with all the little paper parts. But in the end, look at it. It came together. It's rather snazzy and I think that that's going to set off our sim rather well, even though it does absolutely nothing. Well, of course, that isn't entirely true in our case because we put secret magnets in the base. Now, let's see if it'll snap into place. Well, yes, there you go. It's in place, making the rest of the cockpit look rather shabby in comparison. Let's see if we can lift it up and lift the cockpit with it. Okay, one, two, three, up she goes. How do we control our sim? Well, big joysticks would be the way we normally go. Oh dear, no, wait a minute, these are much smaller. Look at these tiny little fellows. Yes, we're going to use these. Hmm, not really quite sure how we're going to use these yet, but let's see. Time to make the cockpit less sad. We're going to take these little parts and we're going to chop them all up and clean them all up. Lots of lovely little switches and things there. And we're going to assemble them so our cockpit has panels that we can put our own real switches and lights into later. Oh, there's the joystick, there's the rudders, the throttle, and all kinds of panels. Oh, that looks a bit more jazzy. There's our screen, and here's our joysticks. Oh, hang on a minute, this is just a computer and a controller. Well, we've got a few things to sort out before we can build it for reals. What we're hoping to do, you see, is take this controller, blow it to bits, and take out the control mechanism within it to connect to our sticks inside the sim. And as for the screen, well, what we're going to use is hopefully hmm, this mobile phone screen component. That should be interesting. But hang on a minute, what about that little fellow? Yes, let's zoom in. This plane has a tiny little targeting computer. Wouldn't it be super neat if we could see that, but how? Yo! 
Oh my goodness, no, it can't be possible. Yes, it is. It's a tiny miniature 1080p monitor. Oh my gosh, it's so fantastic and super, I can hardly stand it. So let's calm ourselves down with a little bit of normal kind of housework here. We've been drilling holes like a jolly little chap into this model for our lights and for our switches. Of course, where we need a switch, they tend to be sort of rectangular in shape. So we start with a small hole, put in a bigger hole, and then... Uh, then we scrapey scrape with a little square shaped file and then we get our little buton and we put it in place and it should just fit and kind of click in there. We'll glue them in place eventually but for now we can just press fit them. Look at that, perfect job. Well, I think so anyway, haha. -ha. Anyway, moving on, let's get to the rest of them. There's only about a billion. Here we go, let's play. No, oh, it wasn't too bad, and they're all in ready for action. What's next? Well, in the next episode, we'll be tackling things like this. We've got a... Oh, no, it's okay. Don't worry. We'll fix it.